analog listener for now. I'm going to give it a string array x y z. Okay. Now I need to I won't put it here, I'll put it underneath. Need to create the analog listener. Private, private void, it's not a function. Analog listener, I did that using control space. New control space analog listener, and then it filled in all the details for me. End up with a semicolon. Now this will check for any keystrokes that I'm going to press and say if name dot equals x I'm going to tell it to rotate our spatial Sinbad in the x direction by time per frame. Let's say if name equals Y I'm going to tell it to rotate in the Y direction by time per frame and then with equal Z I'm going to tell it to rotate in the Z direction by time per frame and so this will also allow me to rotate it in two different axes at the same time if I hold two different keys down. And now what's wrong up here? Okay, I need to nope to end that. Shift F6 to test this. And now we have our Ogre Sinbad. I'm going to press the Z to move him. And one thing I need to do is remove the fly cam because Z is also a method or a key trigger to move the fly cam downwards. So if you have updated to the latest stable SDK, you should now be able to get rid of the fly cam very easily because it is now all in app states based on the constructor passed to the super. And um, okay, it's rotations done. So now shift F6. Oh, got an error. Bring it up so you can see. No pointer exception. I'll click this. Okay, I need to get rid of these two as fly cam no longer exists. So hopefully that now works. Okay, brilliant. So I can no longer move the camera around because I've disabled the fly cam, the stats, and there was another app state, but I can't remember what that one does. I think it was the debug keys, like M for memory, if I remember correctly. Okay, so now if I press Z, it's going to rotate around the Z axis. So what do you think should happen if I was to rotate him around the x-axis? You would expect it to rotate like this. As you can see, if I hold the x key, it doesn't do that at all. And the reason for that is because when you rotate it, the local, not local, the rotation point around the spatial also changes and I will demonstrate that by attaching all the arrows and the ogre sinbad to a node and rotate the node instead. Control shift I I want this node I will be attaching sinbad to the node Attach all the arrows to this node. I need to attach the root node. We'll attach the node to the root node. And I need to initialize the node. 
it's a name, I'll just call it character. So control shift F6 now. So when I rotate him, okay, that, nope, it's because I need to change these to also the node. Control shift, no, shift F6. Now when I rotate, the arrows move with him. So now, if I get to this point here, see if I hold X, he's going to rotate around that X axis. Y. X. So as you can see, when you rotate him, the axis change with him. Hold Y. X. Z. Okay. Under the hood, all these rotations are using quaternions. And if I control shift B on the spatial, it's going to take me into the source. And if I have a look at the rotate method using the x ang angle, y angle, z angle, which I used before, you can see it creates a quaternion out of it. And one important thing about quaternions that I mentioned before is that they are not commutative, but the or there must be an order in which the rotations are applied. So I'm just going to get rid of all these mappings. I'm not going to be using them now. So if I take, and I'll get rid of the, no, I'll keep the arrows. So now if I Rotate our Sinbad by uh, fast math dot half pi zero zero, and I'll just write these out for now. I'm not going to use them yet though. Fast math dot half pi along the y-axis and half pi which correlates to 90 degrees that will be along the x axis so I'll just comment these out for now and remind you which direction he's facing so he's facing towards me so if I rotate along the x axis 90 degrees will face that way if I then rotate him along the y axis you should spin around and be facing upwards instead of down. Nope, because it was 90 degrees, so he just faces right. <laughs> and rotating him by 90 degrees in the z-axis. Let us remind us what he looked like. Along the Z axis, so his head is going to be on the floor again, hopefully. Yes, finally, I got it right once. But what happens if I rotate him? Dot pi. I'm just going to copy this and get into ways of typing it out on the time. So I'll just comment this out quickly to remind you what he looks like. So his head's facing the floor and he's facing right. And mm, I needed to use half pi, not pi. Damn you! Copy this. Okay. So I'm going to comment out these ones. And you will find he's not going to be facing the same way at all. So I've used the exact same rotations along the X, Y, and Z. But what this shows is that the order of rotations is not applied X first, then Y, then Z. It is in fact applied Y first then Z, and then X, when using quaternions in the JMonkey engine. So if I comment out this, it should be the same rotation. 
quickly verify it again in case you forgot what it looks like and there you see it's exactly the same so you have to be careful when using cumulative rotations to get the rotation you want and I guess I should probably discuss how to create quaternions out of Euler angles and simply it's new quaternion control shift I to import it I'm going to type from angles this is probably the easiest way to do it that's my f dot half pi and then I will rotate using this and it should give me the exact same outcome there you go and if I rotate him no actually I think I've bored you enough about quaternions well rotations not really much quaternion discussion but if you go to the palette there is a number of rotation quaternions if I just copy one here and this will go around the pitch 270 pitch being the x-axis so yeah if you ever want to use those they're available in the palette